Hey, before we get going, don't forget to check out Pastel Prose's channel. She just covered a hyper delicate topic, even I don't feel comfortable with. Also, for you people who think I only stir up shit, recently I managed to contribute to Dylan Thomas mending his established estranged? Yes, estranged friendship with dual tones. I assure you, this is purely on accident, and I promise never to do anything nice ever again. That said, I have that call recorded, and it will be up on either Fan and Frenzy or here sometime in the future. There are a lot of ways to lead into this one, so I want to bring up a point from one of Vita Pony's videos that might not seem relevant at first. Now, the idea being that someone just might take it seriously and go through with it. And you know what? Let them do it! Fuck it! If someone is willing to throw their life away because a stranger on the internet commented kill yourself faggot, well then apparently that life was not valuable to begin with. We'll see the most glaring flaw of all in the community. Circle jerking. It's abundant everywhere and here is no exception. Oh, especially here. I know, right? Whether it's Corbulent White Knighting for Minty Root, Toon Critic White Knighting for Lightning Bliss, or Misanthro White Knighting for Keyframe, just about everyone in existence is circle jerking. And then you have people like Jerry, Pete, and FNGR with a personal stake or an agenda to push. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. I do have a stake in this fandom. And a few times I ventured out into the anime analysis fandom, I covered Digibro. The advice I gave, which should really be boiled down to, you suck a drama, please stop. Whether it was throwing a crybaby fit when his hero wouldn't talk to him, which, sadly enough, Digi got what he wanted by acting like a dipshit, or him treating his friend or whatever you want to call what he viewed Monkey Jones as as total shit. In either case, I didn't care about Gay Gook, that's Digi's senpai, or Monkey Jones. You know, the guy that makes Jesse cry, or his fans, or hell, I'm not even sure I remember anymore. The main reason why I don't continue that fight is, let's say that Digi is being a giant asshole. One, people have covered it and it's been done. Two, I'm not in that community. Three, the people in my community that hate Digi aren't people I want to associate with. And with that note, I'm going to segue to Y2K Toon Critic. You know that was clunky, janky. I want to try one more time here. I've been accused of helping out my friends. Keep in mind, we'll get back to that. But there were things from Jerry Pete's video that were almost prophetic. To be united by hatred is a fragile alliance at best. The likes of Knighted Eye and Aguilar work on the same concept. About two videos ago, I said if you wanted to compare myself and Toon Critic to Sith Lords, you wouldn't be all that far off. If you already knew, I've been covering up four Y2K Toon Critic for a long, long, long time. I've hinted about this. I've given you guys a sample, a nibble. Today, I'm giving you literally every fucking thing I can remember. But before I do, I feel I have to explain why, or rather, the last straw. I feel a good place or person to start with this story is with the gentleman named Dark Edge. I'm not gonna railroad Fal, or Dr. Fal, or he has a couple of the names. For the last couple of weeks, or maybe a month or two, possibly longer, I'll be honest, I haven't been keeping super close tabs on Dark Edge. He's been running wild in the Secret Rift lately. The intent, supposedly, is to become the lovable asshole, the troll that everyone fancies as the lovable pain in the butt, but yet still think of him fondly. Think of him as more of a bender Futurama. Despite the support of the moderating staff, and myself included, he has not done a good job of this. Fowl's behavior did something detrimental to myself, something I never wished to do. Look, the wrong way is when someone is clearly being an insufferable ass. Basically, Fal, you temporarily turned me into the Looney Turtle. So we're going to skip past the petty infractions, the bitching about the roleplay in the chat. And then when you turned around and started roleplaying in the chat yourself after getting it banned. So some of you guys might know Vector Brony. Every year he does a cool spread of the bro. Every year he does a Christmas spread of bronies he's cool with. And every year I and some of my friends check it out to see who is and isn't in the cut. Fowl's complaint included mint heart, artistic passion, yiffle, past analysis, and I forget some others. Now it's one thing to bitch about this shit outside the rift. It happens every year. Or in a call where Victor isn't around. Fowl went into the main room with an audience and let his opinion be known. I opted to bitch about past analysis because he hasn't made a video in three years. I recall Vector removing Digi and Tommy, which is fine, they moved on. But honestly, Tommy Oliver has been 
active as far back as I think season six. I understand I'm being totally off point, but I just wanted to throw in my two cents. Did I have more complaints than just pasta? Sure. I just don't think I could have morally argued them. So I kept those complaints out of the room. I understand and agreed with some of the things that Fowl said, but it didn't belong where it was. This is key. He wouldn't shut the fuck up when asked. I eventually had to ask, and I know this because I was the one who had to tell him to give it a rest. Fowl is not a top content creator, but generally we've embraced him as a bit of a meme. I mean that in a loving way. It was a goof, one that Fowl is well aware of, until he wasn't. Fowl winded up having to rules lawyer, corpulent brony style, to the point where no one else was having fun around him. Screw up, apologize, and then lapse back again. Now again, I understand that a lot of Fowl's complaints in the room were somewhat valid. I simply feel it was the frequency of how often he complained, and why he wasn't going to get punished, I'm not passing the buck on that one. The lion's share for ignoring that problem or laughing it off as boys will be boys can squarely be put at my feet. Now, if you're asking me if I was the only one behind Fowl getting away with murder, sure, why not? Now, I fucked up enough on this matter to take the bullet. So, if that sounds like a lot of petty bullcrap that more belongs on the Secret Rift channel than here, we'll have to head back to December 13th, when Fowl learned from someone that he had been removed from Lightning Bliss's Christmas special. If you thought it was petty bullcrap before, you ain't seen nothing yet. Fowl had a brief, limited time background spot. Fowl didn't even have a speaking line. Fowl routinely pisses and moans about her fame, her artwork, and virtually everything about Lightning Bliss. Every chance he gets. He was removed from the project after his outburst in the Secret Rift due to Vector's picture. The leak that told Fowl came from Toon Critic's room. I'll be honest, I tried to pin this on Razor Reviews. There's only one problem, Razor isn't in Toon Critic's room anymore. Toon then came into Limbo and then questioned Dark Edge who was behind it. At this time, I didn't know. And honestly, I didn't even have a good guess at the time. I had wanted back in the domain after leaving over a misunderstanding, but doing so would have kind of made me a hypocrite, bitching about Toon boosting so many people from Limbo for his room. So I didn't ask to go back. Dark Edge told Toon he liked the spy more than Toon. Toon got furious, used some choice words, and then left the call in limbo. Myself and Pastel were laughing our asses off about it. I was in the middle of telling Dark Edge, don't tell me, I can't keep a secret. And he told me, I also like the spy more than Toon. To which I said, wait, Dogai's not in the domain. And I found out he was. So, my knee-jerk reaction was, what a sneaky bastard dog I was for spying for Vita. Again, I was ill-informed, it was a knee-jerk reaction, and I was chuckling about it. And said Limbo, previously Limbo had had some leaks of its own, and my mind had wanted that, but I decided to push that to the back for the time being. I didn't want anything of my personal interest to get in the way of a little bit of fun. There's a lot of reasons why that might be considered remarkably cruel. I didn't hop on and handle that immediately. I was hoping to leverage Dogai spying for Vita to find out everyone Vita was using to look in on me. Skipping ahead, I ran into Dogai later, who explained all Dogai wanted to do was give Fowl a heads up because of the removal. It seemed a bit harsh. That there was no master plan of mass fuckery and Dogai was just being a bro. I asked if Dogai wanted me to keep it quiet. He said yes and I said sure. Now, I'm not great at keeping secrets. About the same time Dog Eyes said this, he was going to bed. Riley popped into the call and said two no's, and that Riley might have told him. This was shortly after I had just got done explaining that if I had to either shoot Dog Eye Crimson in the head or Aeon of Dreams in a hypothetical, Dog Eye would be just fine. And don't get me wrong, I love Peter, but Dog Eye is the best. I don't just like Dog Eye's work, but Dog Eye is just really great to hang out with. I tossed Riley Miller the fuck out on the spot. Don't get me wrong, I like Riley, but about the same time, I was alerted that Dog Eye was having a really bad moment that I won't specifically go into. And this might have added to it, like a really, really bad moment. I'm not gonna lie, I was in the middle of tossing Toon out when I saw that he had already unfriended me. I was kind of dumbfounded that he was still sitting in my fucking room and didn't want anything to do with me, so I gave him the boot. And then I went a little too far and went into the secret rift and kicked him out there. I knew it was too far and I knew it would never stand. 
Toon, after getting added back, accused me of never liking him in the first place, and I was always waiting to get him. Kichi showed up into the rift and, and then told us to drop it. Later Thursday, I apologized because the place to address how I felt about Toon wasn't in the secret rift. So, to all my friends and peers, I'm sorry. There was a whole lot of stupidity in that day. I think that there was something, uh, there was a, some kind of raid on, I think, either some stream Toon Critic was doing, but I didn't really have anything to do with that. I don't really keep up with streams. Um, <sighs> there's, there's some things I'm leaving out for now. But hey, if you know about the story, there's a comment section down below, and who knows, maybe somebody will have a big mouth to give you the full, the ins and the outs that I left out. See you next year. I feel the place to address this is right here. Do I have a bug up my ass about Toon Critic? So, after Toon told me to grow up, and I'm a juvenile fuck, and proud of it, let's talk about Toon's maturity. This is Crescendo Galaxy, aka Brie T. Toon Critic ended up dating her offline, and things were going along smoothly. They met, had their date, and then broke up. Crescendo told myself and another person who can choose to come forward in the comments down below that Toon had become allegedly physical. Naturally, other words were used, but for legal purposes, I feel comfortable keeping the allegations more vague. Now, why Crescendo hasn't come forward publicly so far, it's possible that she saw myself and some other people who were Toon's friends. All I know is, is that that year at BC, Brie Lizzie T made it adamant that she not be left alone with Toon Critic. Toon's response when in question about this was, what the fuck ever. This is Fire Lily. Toon failed to pay his share of the room at one of the conventions and stuck Fire Lily with the tab. I forget the convention, but I know Sweetie Boom said that Toon Critic does this all the time. It's a good thing that Toon Critic brings up my maturity every time we talk, and not what a colossal fuck up he is. This is Mim Kage. Mim is a cool cat. At BabsCon, Toon Critic dumped her on day two of the convention. I would like to point out, this was Mim Kage's first convention, and she was having a lot of problem adjusting to this sort of thing. And Toon's excuse was, well, I got that advice from my friends. I don't even have words. Here's a reading from Toon Critic's checklist and requirements to date him. There's a list. Oh boy. This is a special kind of maturity. Understands how misunderstood I am. Has to think I'm the most attractive man alive. Must not care how disloyal I am. You're too slow. Come on. Step it up. Hey, wait a minute. This isn't the right list. <laughs> Just keep reading it. Doesn't need consent. Come on my face, daddy. Must not care when I blatantly lie to them. Must be a total doormat. Must be into Thomas the Tank Engine fetish porn. Must live in my basement. Must ship Son Amy. Give me all your money, love them green dollar bills, yo. Must have not fewer than 900 body pillows of me. Must have good biology. Must be a BBW. Puts up with my cringe. Let's get right into the news. Must jerk off to my fanfics. Must be up for group sex with my friends. Is with me 24-7. Oh god. Oh yes. Mm. Oh yes. Daddy. Spank me. Okay, okay. Here's the real list. Thank you, Foul. Understands me. Attractive to me. Loyal. Can keep up with me. Isn't the wait-till-after-marriage type. Compassionate. Trusting. Open-minded. Good sex drive. Will go to cons with me. Similar interests. Isn't broke. Loves me as much as I love them. Chemistry. Loyal. Isn't cringy. Not going to cause drama. Literate. Friends like them. Isn't busy 24-7. Isn't a yes-man. And also thank you to Stupid Private for doing this wonderful reading. There's also the fact that Toon Critic borrowed several hundred dollars off of Fallen Wish in an attempt to keep it. Money that Fallen had no earthly business having in the first place, but to Toon's credit to what a conniving, money-grabbing whore he is, he managed to pick the pocket of one of the biggest con men in the fandom. And considering this is Toon, Whenever you get a fucking job, you can tell me to grow the fuck up. There's also the fact, whenever Toon wants to kick someone from his group, 
He turns into a weasel, digibro style, because he can't just say it and just say he doesn't want to hang out with you. He's repeatedly just put up with Aeon of Dreams even though he hates Aeon's guts, and Peter doesn't have to take Toon's crap. There's also the time that Toon Critic asked me and my friends, I forget the names because of course I do, to go after Thespio, aka DeWilstonator, because Toon wouldn't be included in Thespio's projects, which made Toon a petty fuck. I remember when he started dating El Leora, he was still moping around about his old girlfriend, and this was back in the first rift under a male alicorn. This was in the chat in front of everyone. Nice one, Toon. Again, Toon, are you going to financially teach me how to grow up? Is it going to be emotionally? I want to know, where the fuck do you get off telling me to grow the fuck up? So I want to drill this point home. I can spare a dozen of you to one dog eye crimson. So you were right about one thing. I've been waiting around to sit you the fuck down. The Lord knows you've given me ample opportunity again and again since I've known you. For anyone who's ever given Toon money, he makes himself scarce the moment he gets it. When he lost his funds at BronyCon 2016, he ended up hitting Manga Common for $150. I highly doubt that Manga Common ever saw any of that money back. I also want to bring up the fact that when Toon winded up borrowing money from a bunch of people in the fandom to pay Fallen Wish back, he never paid any of it and we winded up telling Bronny to shut the fuck up about it. Of course that's already been covered in one of the previous videos. And everybody just decided to wink at Toon's bullshit, including myself. You want my mature advice? I'd load Fall and Wish money before Toon Critic. And have. Hey Toon, when your friends move over to Florida next year and leave you behind, maybe it'll sink in. You weren't invited because you weren't mature enough. When I hang out with and talk to you, I feel I need to take a bath as there's this invisible layer of muck and a low-rent disingenuousness that clings to the air that literally offends all senses of the natural body and what it possesses. Cunt. Oh, and I forgot, there are also the times when Toon Critic tried to put the move on Kelly Mink, and I believe it was Painted Patience, in reasonable proximity to one another while he was pseudo-dating Kelly Mink. I and Kelly are not friends, and she can choose to deny or assert this story as she sees fit. In fact, everyone involved, down below, be glad to see your responses. But let's get back to Vita now. I definitely have a stake in things. This is Dog Eye Crimson. He is invaluable to me as a friend and an artist. I have a vested interest in seeing Dog Eye feeling well, as I find his talents insightful without peer. I understand attempts to kill yourself over being removed from a Skype chat group is obtuse. That means too much. It means a lot. In this case, I feel it's an obvious overreaction. I am not going to browbeat Dog Guy. Other than, please for God's sakes, don't do that again. In Vita's case, if Buttons had attempted to kill herself and after being removed from a Skype chat, there would have been a second on your high horse within a week. Now I want to be completely clear. I don't want Dog Eye bullied or picked up. And then you have people like Jerry, Pete, and FNGR with a personal stake or an agenda to push. They're not necessarily swallowed by the circle jerk, but they manipulate it to their advantage. Every once in a while, you need a guy to come in without being on his side and say, Your faggots are being retarded, knock it off. Yes, I do play favorites. And so do you, Vita. Explain to me how attempting to kill yourself over a Skype chat group isn't, in your words, cringy. It isn't worthy of mocking. And let's quote Jace just one more time. Now, the idea being that someone just might take it seriously and go through with it. And you know what? Let them do it. Fuck it. If someone is willing to throw their life away because a stranger on the internet commented, kill yourself, faggot, well then apparently that life was not valuable to begin with. Tell me, Vita, if you asked Jace to hit Dog Eye, he would in a moment. So with all that said, why aren't you hitting Dog Eye? It's because you play favorites. It's because you have friends. And as much as I do, it's why you've white knighted Bayfish. It's why you'll never see Vita hit Dog Eye. And no matter how much this is deserving of being called out, the truth is, Vita, you just think that your favorites and your friends are better than mine. Let's pile it on. This is Vita's video where he apologizes to Keyframe and tried to refute Corpulent Brony where he's completely lied about fungibility. So bad that he's unlisted the video. 
I didn't expect to cover drama on this channel, but oh well. I wanted to make a quick video about fungibility since there's been a quite a bit of talk about it since the keyframe drama is in one group. I'm surprised nobody researched fungibility prior to this. Even a simple Google search will tell you enough to see that Corp has no clue what he's talking about. But instead, we all just nodded our heads and went along because we wanted something to happen to certain people charity was benefiting, namely because we didn't like that they were spending money on luxuries while asking for money to get out of their current situations. I can't complain too much. I was one of those people. I was fully on board the fungibility train with keyframe. You won't hear me say this too often, but this is one case. Keyframe, I'm sorry. I should have looked more into this before targeting you. I hope you're happy in Bufu, Egypt, or wherever the hell you moved to. Before I end the video, a quick shout out to Horse News for printing an article which had false definitions of words and therefore was slander. Granted, not purposeful slander, but slander nonetheless. Every once in a while, you need a guy to come in without being on his side and say, You faggots are being retarded, knock it off. <laughs> Vita made this video as well as went into horse news to defend Fongwish, something I sure as fuck didn't do. He got down on his hands and knees, and as Corporal Limbroni put it, bounced on Capra General's lap till Fongwish's article had to be rewritten. Now, at the time I was dating Fallen, I understand why I had to go after Corporal in horse news. What was your excuse, Vita? No, seriously, Vita, answer this question. I know your official answer is this. Well, the video did its job. Yes, it did. Arguably. So did the Pokey Brony video, and you've told me that Pokey showed up and apologized. And that video's still up. You made this video here on fungibility and bad faith. It's the same reason you made that video defending Bayfish. Because you want to get your dick wet. It's the same reason you showed up in my last comment section on how not to Brony 61. It's not because I called you nuts. You are nuts. You've said so. Lately in Rift Matters, I've made damn good sure to involve Lilac Galaxy because I know you guys are super besties. Because you do white knight. Because you do have friends just like everyone else, Vita. You can keep saying when Jace does something on your channel, you don't agree with it. But you want to give him a platform. Except I know that trick. So let me ask you this. Okay, why isn't Jace hitting your friends on your channel when they fuck up? You don't have a vested interest, right? Go on, answer. I think we all know why. And I don't mean in the comments section where you're just gonna ass off. You won't make a video answer because you don't have one. I've checked my friends. Maybe it was kid gloves, but that's far more than you'll ever do. Recently, I did get into it with one of Toon's friends. I forget the name. And mentioning it here wouldn't do much other than scapegoat while this video was being made. I will admit it did keep me motivated after I got flagged twice on Twitter. Aside to Dog Eye, next time that you're having a problem, please contact your real friends or professional help before doing anything hastily. If you find that I've waited so long to tell you guys any of this, friendship can be a bitch. It's hard juggling who you are or aren't on good standing with. I do apologize. But a fair amount of you people kept asking for this, and it kept getting swept under the rug, and I want to thank Dog Eye for giving me the green light. As for Vita, I'm not going to pretend I'm perfect. I'm not going to pretend my girlfriend is perfect. But if you want to discuss something I and her are doing wrong, you feel free to contact me. Did you ever tell Big Mouth Bass where I made a deal and offered if you left Buttons alone I'd be willing to ignore her cunty behavior? That this could all go away? And yeah, Vita, I do know that Flufflepuff dumped her. And I do know that you're dating her. You think you're slick trying politely to tell me Bayfish really wants to be Button's friend. Quillstroke does this same sort of fake disingenuous bullshit. It's why I compared your sorry ass to Ebeck. Buttons wants to trust her and I told her not to. You pulled your CD bullcrap. So I'm just going to keep stooge slapping you and your woman. No, the other woman. And yes... You've given me a laundry list of things you feel I need to change, and I, unlike Jerry, understand I need to change some of them. But you don't reign over my life and who I date and who are my friends. If you want an open, honest, and full discourse, the door is open. That's the moral high ground. Come and get it, bitch. As for Toon, one more time. One more last fucking time. Thank you. Fuck you. Bye.